Oh, a combo scenario. Mosaic, reproject, clip, and catalog. Yes. Okay, I don't, okay, Dave, what, what is this one all about? Uh, this one is basically we wanted to create uh, something similar to what we did in our first example, but we wanted to put it into a more user-friendly format. So it creates a HTML catalog of all the park images. Okay, so well, it looks like we also had a, a bunch of tiles. This time it was a tiled input as well. Yes, yes. We took a, a, the Mr. Sid tiles of the area. Okay. We mosaic them together yeah. in the master mosaic art. And then we do a, a little something different. In, if you recall the first images, the, after clipping, the background uh, was all black. Yes. And we don't really want that in an HTML page because the page is white. And it, would, it would look kind of jarring. So if we open up the raster band no data setter, that's quite a mouthful. Okay. All I've done is I've set the no data value to 255. Okay. Now that sets the, that no data value on each band, so it's essentially okay. creating a no data of 255, 255, 255, which is white. Okay. So we don't actually have any no data to, uh, uh, right now, but as soon as we clip, we will, and it oh. will set those that no data area to a white background. So the right, okay, you're you're setting that up so that when you clip, the areas that aren't square or the the little pieces that have to fill in to make a square will be white. Yes. Got it. Okay. Okay, next step is the clipper to clip out the, the parts as we did before. Yeah. Now, because we're creating an HTML page, we need to know uh, in advance what the name of, of those output files are going to be. And as we saw with the first example, for the uh, big part that's in multiple pieces, uh, the writer will automatically number these pieces, but we don't know in advance uh, what they are. So what we're going to do is essentially put in a counter and we're going to get ahead of that process. Right. So a counter, we're going to uh, give it a count by the park name. So the counter can have multiple counters uh, that you ah. can assign to an attribute, and it will keep uh, m multiple counts uh, as it So Walnut off. Creek will get, the first Walnut Creek will get a value of zero, then it'll get one, two, two three, three, and then when George Jefferson Park comes in, it'll, it'll start reset back. to zero. Again. Got it. Okay. And so. all, the, all the counters are independent of each other. Yes. So now that we know that, that, that count, we concatenate that value ah. into the name to create an output name. So it's an underscore and then whatever. So we'll see like George Jefferson underscore zero. Exactly. Right. So uh, now we split the streams. Um, oh. Yeah, exciting. The first stream up at the top is creating the actual images uh, files themselves. Ah. So we send it into a raster sampler. Ah. Now, in this raster assembler, because I'm creating sort of thumbnail images, but I wanted to keep the proportions of the images yes. uh, usable, so you can see the proportional sizes. So, of like the park. George Jefferson Park might be very small as opposed to Walnut Creek, which is huge. Exactly. So, I just gave it a blanket uh, reduction uh, to 10% of the original size. Okay. And again, I set the interpolation type to by cubic. Right. So, the next step is to force the input image to RGB24. Okay. Um, we do this because we're going out to JPEG, and JPEG essentially only accepts uh, uh, monochrome and RGB24. So if our input data has a different type of, of uh, color space, we have to force that uh, color th that into the correct color space before we break. So what was the color space flowing through here? Would you get, make a guess? It was coming from Mr. Sid. and It would probably be RGB24. Okay, so this is just... Making this, sure this is a belt and suspenders thing. Okay, all right. So so that's fine. And then there there goes our JPEG, and it's fanning out by that image name thing. Yeah. Okay. And I and actually on JPEG as well, if you open up the properties, you can also set the compression percentage there uh -huh. as well. Well, you did a an oddly chosen twenty eight. Yeah, I think that's the default. Okay. <laughs> twenty eight. All right. It's that's a, it's a light compression that won't degrade the image. Okay. Okay. Um, now so that's okay. Now, for folks that don't know, whenever we split the streams like this, basically one copy of the image went up and another copy went down. It's, we, we doubled our double down here. Yes. And so now on the down part, what's going on at the bottom? Well, now as part of the catalog, we wanted to put in a little bit of information about the park as well as just the picture. So I'm, I decided to put in the bounds of the park, but to do that, you, we want a, a, a sort of useful bounds that everyone will understand. Now, the source data is in Texas State Plain uh, feet, yes. which would basically give a bunch of big numbers that nobody knows what to do with. So I'm reprojecting here to lat long uh, 84, which will give me uh, dis uh, decimal degrees. So which... you're, you're messing with Texas? Yes. Like, okay. I'm bringing Texas back into the world. Okay, okay. Um, 
And now everybody understands latitude and longitude, so so you've got a good uh, a good understanding of what these numbers mean. So really, you're doing that just to get new bounds, just to get the bounds of the park. Yes. Now, now for people that don't know, this might seem like a lot of work to go through to just get the bounds. But I need to explain to the folks at home that FME is inherently lazy, and so when we put a reprojection on the image, it doesn't actually do any work on the image right then. It just says, well, in case anybody ever asks me, uh, I will do the work to know where, where the pixels are. So this actually takes no time at all to do this. Um, it isn't actually doing the work. And when Dave asks for the bounds, this thing says, well, okay, if I was reprojected, what would, be, what would my bounds be? And it gives it to him, and it still didn't really do any work. So this is very, very fast to do. Yeah, yeah. FME's raster processing works on a, a pull model. In, in that we look at the uh, output required before we actually read the input. Yes. And we take the processing steps along the way and we bundle them all up into a single transformation and then basically run the data through backwards. Yes, it's like, I've heard that it's like um, an onion skin, which is also like, I think, ogres from Shrek. Uh, you, the, you start on the outside, you have to peel it off to get to the inside. Uh, there's somehow a Shrek tie in there, but really the, the original file is at the inside of the onion, and then as you layer your projection of things on there, we just layer that all on. We don't do anything until at the very end when you go to a writer, that's when we take the great big bite and, uh, and do the work. Yeah, there's two big advantages to this, uh, this method. The first big advantage is performance. We only read the pixels we need. So if you're taking a small clipped area out of yes. a very large, uh, say, ECW, we will only read this, the section of the ECW that's required for the small clipped area. And this makes the, the processing much faster than it would be if we had to sort of read the, the entire data, uh, source data ahead of time. The other advantage is that whenever you do processing on a raster feature, each individual process slightly degrades the image right. uh, as part of the processing. Um, by bundling all our, our, all our processes into a single transformation under the hood, Essentially, we're minimizing the amount of image degradation. So you can tie together a whole bunch of manipulations and be confident that you are, you are not overly degrading the image the right. way you would if you were, did them all separately. Right, right, right. So anyway, um, I think we'll just sort of skip through. The, re the rest of this is basically building up some HTML. Yes. Is that fair to say? Yeah. And then we uh, get to see it. And for those that are interested, we're going to make all this stuff available with the data and everything else, and you can, you can try this at home uh, yourself. So, I'm going to just go ahead and take a look at this output, Dave. Uh, let's see. And you can try this too if you're uh, if you're at home and uh, take a look. And here's the here's the results. Yes. Simple but pretty. So is George Jefferson Park actually in here? I just made that up. I don't think. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think George Jefferson has a park. Uh, but anyway. The big can, walnut has many parks. Yes. So there they are. And um, there's uh, yeah the the various pieces of Big Walnut Creek, and these all would have different file names um, that were generated for them. So that's the combo.